Well, hello and welcome. How are you all? I'm still getting used to myself being on a big screen and looking at myself. It's all very bizarre. But anyway, how are you all? Hope you're doing well. Um, I still haven't moved the stuff from behind me yet. So two things I want to talk about today, very briefly. So Princess Kate has actually come out and made a statement, and I don't know whether you've heard what that is. It's all over the all over the media at the moment. Hi, Terry. Hello, Harrison. And that uh, she got she's received a cancer diagnosis. So it is stated that when Prince William had to cancel just recently an appearance that was when the announcement came through and you know it had to do with speculation whatever you think about her you've got to remember that she's got a very young family and it's obvious that you know she has to take care of herself and uh that so that's been a bit of a shock and apparently um Harry and Megan have actually released a statement um, wishing Kate all the best. Uh, so I want to talk about that briefly um, and all the media speculation on that. And then we want to talk about the latest allegations that have been put towards the Browns and TLC um, by Katie Joy. Um, and she reveals in one of her posts that she studied estate law, which has got me a little bit baffled because I don't know how that's happened. So that's what we want to really be talking about today um, and anything else that happens to come up. The Grand Prix is in Australia today in Melbourne. Um, I'll be watching that later this afternoon probably um, and because uh, I like fast cars, I like racing. So, yeah, that will be on at my house later today. But yes, it like it's uh what is it? It's nine twenty a.m. on Saturday morning. Um, so I guess one of the things that I'm going to say is I I wonder whether all the people that have made these salacious allegations about um. Prince William and Princess are now going to apologise now that they know what's actually gone on or what's been going on. Because it has to be about um, the family as far as I'm concerned now. Uh, so there was a statement made by Harry and Meghan um, so this is from The Guardian. Um, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have wished health and healing for the Princes of Wales. Harry Egan said they hoped Kate and her family were able to heal privately. We, we wish health and healing for Kate and the family and hope they are able to do so privately and in peace, the couple said in the statement. So here's a timeline of what happened. Um, it's very unprecedented for uh, for a statement to be that. I mean, when um, the king announced his cancer diagnosis, it was done in a statement. So the fact that she did it by video. So uh, four hours ago, the Prince of Wales made a health announcement. Um, she's also said she's receiving chemotherapy. Uh, and then. Um, the Prime Minister calls for privacy and criticises the in, the uh, intense scrutiny. Um, Prince Charles said he was very proud of, of, of the Princess of Wales um, and has remained in close contact with her. And two hours ago, uh, Harry and Meghan so that's essentially the timeline of that. So when you think, I think Louis five, um, you can imagine that it's a very stressful time. And again, it just shows you that cancer uh, 
has no barrier. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be royalty or you can be nobody. Um, it's just it does not have any boundaries. It does not care what socioeconomic status you are. It's a insidious disease and it's something that it would be great if we could find a cure for. Um, and I think just about everybody has um, knows somebody that has passed because of cancer. I am looking for my next post, my next lot of information. So, yeah. So that's where that is at the moment. But there's been so much speculation and so much um, Uh, you know, so much speculation about what's been happening in the royal family. Uh, it, it, it's a little bit, to me, it's a little bit sad. But anyway, so let's move on to the next one. So we're still very much still on the sister wives topics and there's just been more and more calling out, more and more calling out of this. And it's... But she's also got into some other polygamy stuff. And, you know, she she's criticised Christine for going back to work. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately that is a reality for normal people is that even after family members have passed, um, we have to go back to work. It's just normal state of affairs. Sister Wives, editor. And now she's saying that there is, she's, she's, um, that an editor uh, worked at Nickelodeon. So therefore, hi, Barbara. So therefore, because, the, because she worked on, um, the two shows. She must be evil. And again, wow, here for this. I don't know how you could be here for it. So um, that's her other her other thing, but um, we'll have to go to Facebook, I think, to see some of this other stuff. But um, without balls, shared this, and this is where uh, I'm saying is possibly another lawsuit. So she said on here, I said this on the video yesterday, but I want to expand on it. I'm not a legal expert by any means, however, I fully believe that Janelle would be able to be given executor of Garrison's estate as his next of kin and based on only what I've learned through my bachelor's degree on the state law, which I covered in my last class. I believe if Janelle chose to attempt to and was given executionship of his estate, if he did not have a will, she would have to do that that there definitely would be something here where Cody, Puddle Monkey, Figure 8 and TRC could be held accountable for sure. However, I truthfully do not believe that Janelle would actually act on that and in my opinion, she is the only one who could. She has always seemed like she did not ever want to harm the family and has done, and this has done enough harm that I really don't know what she would do here. I imagine she's going to have some anger about the situation and also towards Cody and I hate that I think she's the only one who can finally put Cody's feet to the fire on this. 
I've just finished re-watching seasons 12 to 18 because I wanted to see Garrison again and my mother's heart breaks for her, but I just don't know. And then she says, Janelle 100% has grounds to sue for wrongful death, death. And then someone wrote, you are exploiting his death as much as anyone else, and we both know that. How many videos have you done in the last two weeks again? Oh, yes, too many. Being critical of a public family is fine, but this is screwed up and relentless. You have made a lot of assumptions and tried passing it off as news. No other person who provides commentary on this family has gone as far as you had have. And to be honest, it reeks of exploitation. You have been critical of various members' grieving process and felt like you have the authority to provide clarity on their social media posts. For your information, people don't need to tell us what Madison means. When she talks about her brother, we all have ears and brains <laughs> that are more than capable in, of interpreting what she says. You don't need to clarify for her. I work with folks who've experienced the worst types of trauma and honestly, from my education and professional experience, you are only aggravating this family's grief and spreading blame, of course, with the facade um, facade of care go up now what I mean what she's doing I guess is really what a lot of the speculation was happening with um Princess Kate as well the fact that she was in hiding and and all the stories that were being made up about Kate and um Prince William or Princess Kate and Prince William and uh but I think what was telling in that she talks about her bachelor's degree in estate law and I thought well is that why she got the uh, estate lawyer working for her? Hello, autistic show. Um, the estate lawyer working for her. They're both estate law experts. I don't know. Um, I, 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 I don't know how that then makes her an expert. And how on earth can she be talking about wrongful death suits and everything against TLC. At the end of the day, Garrison was an elk in um, Arizona and at some point in time he would have had the ability to not appear on the show if he didn't want to because, remember, he didn't appear on the show for a period of time because he, went, he was off and about. So I... I, I I don't understand. Now, could she – I can see her getting into some trouble for, from her exploitation and her um, and her provocative posts. I mean, I've got to find it, but um, I've seen stuff where she's accused, again, Cody, of the same stuff she's accused 7M of. She's got to remember she's in the middle of an active lawsuit. She's in the middle of an active lawsuit and whether she wants to pretend that it's going to go away or not, she has to remember that she's getting into trouble. She's been in trouble for talking like that. This is what 7M complained about, her exaggeration. And um, you can't exaggerate on these things. So let's have a look, see if I can find where she's talked about it. But the other, the other issue that she's got is if they cancel Sister Wives, uh, um, the Duggars have gone off TV. Sister Wives have gone off TV. What's she got left? What's she going to talk about? So here's some comments. Let's look at some comments. So this is this is from her Facebook page. So this is on the post where she talks about ratings. Okay. Um. She talked about ratings on uh, for Sister Wives and someone says, why hasn't Cody been arrested? Because the corruption, because of corruption in the states with polygamy. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> so someone, the comment, so you can see that it says that a comment's been deleted. Isn't that good? You can see. <clears throat> Hi, Christine. You agree she's going to get herself into trouble? I'd love um, TLC to actually send her a, a letter. In Australia, we call it a show cause notice. And you have to outline um, in the show cause notice, you have to outline all the defamatory or all the alleged defamatory and they've got to show cause why it's not defamatory type thing. So or take it down. So that's how it starts in a state. So um but yeah, I want to know what she what would she do if if, for example, sister wives did get deleted because she'd be in a bit of trouble. Um Let's have a look at these comments here. So, yeah, it's all right to say they need to cancel it. But, and don't forget, here's, 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 another, here's another big perspective of this, all right? TLC is a TV show, right? There are camera operators. There are producers. There are, um, there are set people there are there's there's crew there's crew involved audio people sound people um i know that they did some stuff for covid but there are people who uh for all intents and purposes are employed because of the show if you cancel the show now she's saying under the law um, I mean, there's a lot of allegations here. She says Garrison's passing comes after three years of persistent and abhorrent comments by his father to national audiences, which painted him unfavorably. How many parents have said stuff to their kids when they've been angry that hasn't been appropriate? I mean, imagine if you had TV cameras at that time as well. I'm just saying. Under the law, producers of the network obligate to ensure that Garrison nor any other participant would be exploited or harmed by working on the show after care and resources should have been set up and filming paused to address all issues and they failed. Could this be a basis for a lawsuit? Yes, Cody's defamation and slander of his son could be included in the negligence claim. So now she is a civil law expert. There you go. So not only does she talk about estate law, she studied estate law, she's a civil law expert. There we go. No wonder she's so confident about her lawsuit. I'm just waiting for it to load. <laughs> Story of my life, waiting. So... I really want. I mean, are you you can just see the um, you can just see all the um the so the text there, what she's saying, and some of it to me, it's salacious, in 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 my opinion. You don't have proof because. You don't know what was happening in the mindset. What what's what's been happening? It could have been something unrelated to the TV show, but she's linked everything to the TV show, which is very harmful, in my opinion. But she's talking about the fact that um, they can, uh, you know, there's there's all these lawsuits, and I don't think that that's right. You're gonna work now. All right, so it talks about cancer in the show. Someone says, um, no, none of the children. And remember, the children were adults, so some did step away. Um, you do know that most of it is scripted, right? 
Yes, it's a reality show at the moment. And that's what you've got to remember. What well, after more years when her son sees everything she said on, I hope. Well, that's right. That's the other thing. Um, she said stuff about her son that wasn't very nice either. So we're going to go to, um, I'm going to go to her YouTube channel and let's have a look at the comments on her YouTube channel. I, I can only imagine as a parent who, not, like, I can't imagine what it would be like as a parent to lose a child, but to lose a child where there has been a broken relationship, I imagine that there's going to be a lot of guilt and there's, they're dealing with a lot of stuff that you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. And I would not wish that on anybody. And they don't need a million um, videos done on the fact that their life was played out on TV. <sighs> So 23 hours ago, I mean, she's got 97,000 views on that video about um, Cody Brown and TLC could face ma massive lawsuits for negligently. Well, I mean, that to me could be also deemed as defamatory because she is saying that Cody and D TLC are responsible for Cap Garrison's death. Where's the proof? <sighs> there goes, she's put Arizona law there. More about lawsuits. And interestingly, she's got them linked so she can see how many people look there. Then she's got here a link to the ex-wives of Cody. Oh, she's taken the shop down. Here's all her other videos around it oh look what does the nanny do <sighs> yes she did say that she did say so so she says garrison's death by suicide is a her is a horrific part of reality tv reality tv pushes mental health to the limits of their cast Cast have no control how they are portrayed and frequently high stress and producer coercion is used to get the best sound bites for the show. Over 40 people have killed themselves due to their participation in the reality show. We cannot ignore this topic and it must be discussed. Under the law, every person is entitled to a safe workplace and all employers have a special duty to ensure that they prevent suicide by providing aftercare and access to mental health resources. Bullying is a contributing factor in causing suicide. Katie, that's what she says. All right, so there's 43 comments. And, of course, everyone's an expert. Again, we don't know. I don't know what's in the contract. We don't know whether there was support offered. We don't know. There's so much we don't know. We don't know. I don't know what what was the breaking point. We don't know. There's just so much we don't know and we may never know and we don't have a right to know. We don't have a right to speculate. Everyone's saying, of course TLC knew. Then someone says, um, I didn't change the language based on your feedback. YouTube changed the rules and I'm able to use certain language without risk of violating their rules. I still have to monitor the number of times I use the language. It's not because I don't care, but I have to respect the platform. As far as I am concerned, it's funny how concerned she's about being demonetized. Um, Kristen Decker, of course, responded. Of course she did. Where's her, where's her thing? So Christian, of course, her bestie, 
KJ won't listen to those of us. Autistic, Shil says, won't listen to us who survived our own attempts of self-deletion. I don't blame my parents. I blame war and school officials allowing me to be severely bullied and blaming me for it. <laughs> Correct, Autistic Shil. Uh, as I said, we don't know. We have no idea what was going on in in but I think it's very, very dangerous, in my opinion, to be pointing the blame at somewhere when we don't know. Um, so Kristen Decker says, we're only on this show for one episode. All four of us felt traumatised from their manipulation set up in cruelty. I wrote a letter to Tim Gibbons, who had begged me to come on the show and promised me everything that didn't happen. I told him about their behaviour and dishonesty to us, especially to me as Christine's anti-polygamy aunt. He did not bother to reply or apologise. None of them have to this day. All the years these children have been put, been through too much with the pretending they were happy and wealthy, acting and having to behave, etc., etc. And then it says, um, you all should find the contract TLC made Kate sign. All the children must participate in Kate or Kate gets fined by TLC. They put a 10-year gag order on John and those kids because of TLC's assets and they paid for John at the divorce. So that's for Kate Place 8, whatever that is. Um, hi, Hanks, Texas. And then someone's there saying thank you for all that work that you do. Kristen Decker. Uh, someone says the producer sent sent texts to Janelle right away. That's one reason why she was so worried. Sending Gabe to check on his brother was about the dumbest thing I've heard. She should have she she called she should have called 911 for wellness check or have gone herself, called the roommates, they sent text messages. So again again, how would you react in that situation? And then someone says about the fact that um, that they ultimately they were all they were uh, they were all um, cancel the show. But what 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 is that? Uh, Katie going to do if the show's cancelled? And at the end of the day, they are adults. Some of them are adults. There's only very few minor children now. And if you notice, Robin and Cody's youngest children aren't on there very much at all. See, Robin, uh, Cody, Robin, and TLC should be held accountable. What? So that's where we are, you know. I I don't and I don't know how you can prove wrongful. I don't know how you can prove wrongful um, death. But I want to know how, where did this Bachelor of um, Estate Law come from? When did you get that?
The adults continued to sign that contract with TLC year after year. This is addressed at the end of the video. So, you know, these are all her uh... Now, of course, we've got to bring the, the Duggars into it. Of course we do. Wait, how she came to have a bachelor's um well, that's, I'm trying to find the actual post post of it. She uh, if they provided our, if they provide alcohol to anyone on the set, the show should be taken off the air. And I would hope that authorities would look into this situation. However, I doubt that this would ever occur. She goes, alcohol is provided on most reality show sets. Again, how do you know that? And if Garrison didn't have a will, would his parents inherit his equity? I think this is it here. Garrison recently uh, clearly purchased his home and car when his own father said he could he never could. Those items he bought with pride in spite of what his father said. His father should not get one cent. Cody's money hungry. And then Garrison was in the National Guard and members are required to have a will and a state set up. Apparently. She says. I'm just sort of looking for the replies that she's made. Um, you're pretty sure there were... Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yes. Garrison was in the National Guard. Yeah, that's it. That's what that one. Yeah. All right. Um, so everyone's saying, oh, I hope they're liable for Cody's death. Maybe she did delete it because she got some slack. And they're going, they have lawyers, correct. I would imagine that they'd have lawyers. So I said this on video on I said this on the video yesterday, but I want to expand. I'm not a legal expert. I fully believe Janelle would be able to be given executor of Garrison's estate as his next of kin. <laughs> However, I don't believe. And then she says, Janelle. Oh, there it is. Oh, it wasn't it wasn't Katie, it was this this woman here. Um, Janelle has 100% grounds to sue for wrongful death. So, apparently, she's saying, I mean, again, if she says he's got, um, Janelle's got 100% grounds to sue for wrongful death, is that defamatory if it's not correct? So, I, it was not clear in the post that was shared on Twitter that I just shared who made that comment. And I misinterpreted it to be um, Katie Joy's comment. I need to retract that and say that that wasn't her comment. Her response was that Janelle could 100% say it. All right? Super wrong for death. Um, so it says Christine trying to justify why she keeps working. Because everybody has to work. 
So, yes, so that was the comment that I referred to earlier. It was made by somebody else. So it's not Katie that has a bachelor in estate law. Somebody else does. But I still don't know that. Um, I shall order cook. It's a cable channel owned by Warner Brothers. It has many shows on it. Yes, it does. And I'm sure uh, also... Um, I am also certain that um, they they would be very well and I, well they would ver be very much aware of the risks. But implying that that Cody and TLC could be sued for wrongful death, I think is 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 very and using the word one hundred percent is um, walking a very 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 fine line, in my opinion. Very fine line. So... But what, I mean, what show, what else would you get? I mean, there are so many different reality shows. I mean, we've got Married at First Sight, one of the shows that's on in Australia at the moment, and that is scripted. And we're told that not all that we think is real is not real, you know? We don't know, as I said, I can't, I could not say who was responsible because I don't know other than the fact it's a very tragic situation and I just could not imagine having to bury my child. And I mean, what's happening to the Brown family is no is uh, very similar to what's happened with um, Prince William and Princess Catherine in the fact that there's been all these salacious comments made and allegations made, and she's now Kath, uh, Princess Kath, Kate's been forced to make a public announcement, and she's done it. Um, and Princess Kate, oh, somebody was saying that um, the kids are on their Easter break and so she wanted to make it um, so that she, when she made the announcement that the kids were sort of protected in their own little bubble, uh, like they were home with the her and William so that they could work through it with them a little bit further. But, you know, again, that's still speculation. But Christine's right. That that fuse, all of that could have been made up for the cameras for all that we know. And, you know, we, we just don't know. We don't know anything. I saw her announcements. Oh, yes, oh, Princess Kate, yeah, I did it at the start. But, yes, it's, um, yeah, her cancer diagnosis. So, Princess Catherine. But, I mean, she's only come out publicly because there has been so much talk and speculation. People were saying that Prince William was having an affair. People were saying that some, she'd been um, disposed of. People, people were saying some really horrible things. And what you've got to remember is at the end of the day, um, there are children involved. There's George... Charlotte and Louis, and there's children involved, and they want to protect their children, and they have every right to protect their children. The Browns have every right to ask for privacy to respect their minor children. They've still got minor children. They have every right to ask for that as they work through it all, because at the end of the day, some children have lost a sibling. 
doesn't matter how famous you are, there has to be a point at which you stop. Oh, some of those uh, some of those conspiracies were horrible to sexual, absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible. I just hope now that people will give her that respect that she needs. So obviously the initial thing was that she'd be uh, back in public around Easter, but I think now that she's commencing her chemo treatment or she's in her chemo tr treatment, uh, she may be delaying her coming back for work. Of course, it is. Yep. Well, look at all the speculation and the stuff that uh, has been said about the Browns, as we saw, you know, possibility of going and, and suing because of negligent death. <sighs> I mean, look at this. I mean, this was... Here's another post. Look at this. If I had one piece of advice to give Christine, I'd tell her to get offline and heal. I would tell her that she and her kids need to get into some trauma-informed therapy to recover, not only from Garrison's death, but from Cody's abuse. I would recommend that she protect her only minor child that she has left and get off reality TV. I would remind her that money means nothing and working means nothing if your children are suffering. I'd remind her that people are frustrated with the family because they feel like the kids haven't been protected. This whole family needs psychological help immediately. Now that suicide has been shown as an option for a way out, other siblings could follow. She has not just said that, did she? Get offline, get your family in order, please, please, please. Christine has not stopped working since his death. Her Airbnb page was posting content of her in videos one day after Garrison died. Um, the family needs serious help. They're so blinded by money they can't see it. For those telling her she needs to stay busy, she can stay busy by going to therapy, getting her daughter in therapy and recovering. Her job, which is the show, contributed to the abuse and bullying of Harrison. Christine is also selling Plexus as a cure for mental health, which will not cure mental illness. She needs to heal. True, She needs to heal. Truly. Disagree all you want with my opinion, but this family has been traumatised by polygamy and needs to get offline. <sighs> Uh, yes, Princess Kate has cancer. Oh, well, she they found cancer um, after her surgery. So she had her surgery and she went for post-op tests and they found cancer. Oh, they found that she'd had cancer, uh, some cancer cells. So she's having some, um, um, she's going to have, she's started chemotherapy. Okay, so then back to this post, a psychologist was interviewed on secrets of polygamy and said victims of polygamy have trauma equivalent to prisoners of war. They are traumatised and need serious help to recover. And, of course, she's turned comments off. Who? Who? Whose business is it as to how you grieve? All we know, all we know, short order cook. It's from the abdominal surgery, so it's whatever's come out from the abdominal surgery. So we don't know. Um, some people like to stay busy and work through their grief and their pain. Some people like to take time off. 
who are you to tell anybody how they're allowed to react to losing a child? Does anybody else get really, really, like, is anybody else really, really angered by this post? Has she got any reels on here? No. So what? She's gone back to work. Some people can't get time off work. Some people only get a day off work. Some people get the day off, can only get the day off to attend the funeral and then they've got to go back to work the next day. Some people don't get the benefit of just working whenever they like. But who am I or who is anyone to tell somebody else how they are allowed to grieve? That's what I want to know. I am. I can't read anything she writes, nor can I stand to listen to her. Grieving is one thing you can't, no one knows how they react. Well, that's right. And you don't know how you're going to react. That's, that's what my, that's what my thing is too. So, yeah, I don't know how that works or the, the grieving. I just got an email from somebody on my website saying that an email address that or my business email address is appearing on their DoorDash account. I don't use that. I only use the business address for business. So I don't know how that's happened. Bizarre. Oh, there's a. Did you hear that there was a, a bombing in? Um, there was an attack in Moscow. Let's have a look at that because this 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 really makes me really. Um, and the Prime Minister of Australia has just um, made a statement too. 
about Kate, but have a look at this. Moscow Concert Hall attack leaves dozens dead and more than 100 injured. Look at this. So it caught fire following a shooting. Several gu gunsmen burst into the Crocus City Hall in Moscow, sprayed visitors with automatic gunfire. Russia's Federal Security Service says 40 people have died. Um, the latest report is saying that Islamic State has claimed responsibility. The Islamic State claimed responsibility for the attack in a statement on social media. This could not be independently verified. In the past, IS has claimed responsibility for attacks it's had nothing to do with. Um, Russia repeat media reporting that the venue's roof was collapsing. And, of course, the attack comes after Putin cemented his grip on the country. So here's some of the pictures here. So... Um, So where you live, Sally, if there's no will, it goes to the spouse. If the spouse is deceased, it goes to children. If there's no children, it goes to the state. I think that's very similar to a lot of places. Um, and Putin is receiving. So they've cancelled all mass gatherings. So it's scheduled for the weekend, apparently. So... Um, And apparently a, a, um, a synagogue was um, attacked. I'm in the US, but not sure if it's the same in every state. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so there was a shooting, but uh, it seems to be that IS is claiming responsibility for it. So, um, interesting. Oh, here's something interesting. Um, so there's a new new AFL, new Australian rules team coming out in Australia, being released. It's called the Tasmanian Devils. Now, I don't know whether you know this, but Warner Brothers actually has a copy. Well, they tried to stop it because they have the trademark on Tas Devil. Now, one of the rules in Australia is that you cannot try trademark <laughs> well, that is true, short order cook. That is true. That is true. You used to be able to trust them. Um, I guess we'll wait for the rest of the story. But anyway, uh, um, but what what's very very interesting is that when Warner Brothers Warner Brothers reckoned. They did not know that the Tasmanian devil was actually a Australian animal, a real animal. They reckon they did not know. And then they said they did not know that you could not trademark a fauna animal in Australia. So I find that really, really, really hard to believe. So let's have a look. I want to look at, I want to show to you that it is an Australian animal.
So Warner Brothers have had to sort of backtrack a bit because they've had to allow it because, as I said, it is actually an Australian uh, native and you know what that Tasmanian devil looks like in the cartoons. Um, Well, they don't quite look like that. Here is what it looks like. There's also the Tasmanian tiger, and that's that. It's that's. I think that one is extinct. This one's close to. This one is on the verge of extinction. So it's uh, you know, they, they're trying to look after. It. That is the Tasmanian devil. Look how tiny it is. Look how tiny it is. Look how tiny it is. Look how tidy it is. So that's the Tasmanian devil, all right? So it's a – and it's, it's – uh, funnily enough, you'll find it in Tasmania. <laughs> Funny, that. So the football team's named after the animal, and so Warner Brothers had to relent. But they, it, they were going to take uh, – It's yeah, it is now endangered. It's the largest – Carnivorous, oh, this is uh, Zoo's Victoria. It's the largest carnivorous uh, animal. No, marsupial, sorry, marsupial. Need to get this right. So here's another picture of the devil. Okay, there it is. Oh, the Tasmanian devils. <laughs> oh, really? Inside Russia, YouTube channel said people were warned there could be attacks after the election. That's interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if there's not um, that, that, to be honest, of um, the attacks. Yeah. So this is the Tasmanian devil. So it is decreeing and it's endangered. There's less than 15,000 in the wild now. You want a picture of them going off their nut. We can have a – they are ultimate Karens. They are. Well, let's see if I can find one. And I think that's where the Tasmanian devil from Warner Brothers came about. Because of the fact – Oh, look, I have come out from the, yeah, I'm, I'm not really going to be, um, I'm not going to really be doing that, showing anything like that. So let's have a look. This is the unsettling brawl. <sighs> let's have a look. And they like to fight too, by the way. Let's have a look. I haven't seen this. This, this could go badly. This is called the unsettling brawl. They are. A screecher free. Look, they are ultimate Karens. And they and again, like like a lot of Australian um natives, animals, they look cute, but you don't want to be on the other side of it. You don't want to be on the other side of this. It's like kangaroos, it's like koalas. Koalas aren't, aren't very nice either. Oh look, there's my video. No wonder they call them devils. Yes, autistic shield. Yes, that's why they call them devils. They are devils. So that's this is what they're like. But that high-pitched, you know, when you think of Taz, the Warner Brothers character, that's where that noise has come from, something from uh, about the Tasmanian devils. So, yeah, so that's the Tasmanian devils. Uh, yes, yeah, so you you would you remember the cartoon version where it travels spinning around and make that horrible noise? Yeah, it's quite, quite interesting.
So that is the Tasmanian devil. So apparently Warner Brothers relented when they said they discovered that the Tasmanian devil was actually a real animal. Because there was talk that Warner Brothers, as I said, was going to really put up the fight. And so I want to show you this. This is from the from the um, Daily Mail. And um, the AFL boss said Warner Brothers didn't know the Tasmanian devil was real. Well, that's right, Short Order, Short Order Cook says. There's no way that they didn't know. But here's what it was. Tasmanian bosses, Warner Brothers, did not know that the Tassie devil was a real animal when the team battled for their entertainment giants for rights to use the name. Taz has been a Looney Tunes character for over 70 years. Warner Brothers hold, holds the trademark rights to the name. So Warner Brothers owns the right to the name Tasmanian devil and did not know the, the term referred to a real animal. The island state was announced as a location for AFL's newest franchise in May and officially launched the Tasmanian Devils logo and jersey on Monday night. It came after there were fears a protracted legal battle with Warner Brothers Entertainment Inc. over the use of the Tasmanian Devil name. One of the most popular Warner Brothers... So this is the Tasmanian Devil. And it does bear little resemblance to the animal. This is their logo, which is based on the real Tasmanian devil. Okay. Taz first appeared in 1954 and Lily Tunes trademarked the iconic character in 84. In 2000, they were granted five more trademarks for the image. Devil's chairman, Grant O'Brien, said it became clear during negotiations that executives from the company did not realise the character was based on the Apple Isle's famous carnivorous marsupials. I think there was, for a period of time, a lack of understanding that there was really an animal called the Tasmanian Devil. Once that was understood, things got a bit easier. But anything to do with copyrights, trademarks, those sorts of things is tricky. But we got great cooperation from Warner Brothers, and it's a name we wanted to fight for because it's ours. It's sort of our animal character, and we want our club to stand for. That's what we were fighting for. So the image is based on the real Tasmanian Devil. And the team's name is will be the Tasmanian De Te Devils. I know the females like the bad boys, Barbara, hey? Um, the Warner Brothers version of Tasmanian Devil was invented by animation di director Robin McKinsum, who was running out of animals to base their characters on. So that's, the, that's also their jersey. Uh, the animators wanted Warner at Warner Brothers found that they had used the last animal known to man as a character fodder. Uh, his son, Bob McKinson Jr., told the Tampa Bay Times, my dad, who was into crosswords at the time, came across the name Tasmanian Devil while working on a puzzle. At first, no one knew what it looked like, so dad had to look it up in the dictionary and develop his look from that. McKinson said his father's original design was closer to that of the actual animal than the version well known. They sort of, they have sort of bastardised the image of the Tasmanian devil as my father originally drew it. Um, I really don't like the way the show's animators had modified the look. So the original person behind the Tasmanian devil doesn't like. Correct. I, I, I think, I think that's correct. I think they should work out a, a trademark because, as I said, and you see why they would fight for it. Um, they would, they. Would, and I would I would support that because um, it is an Australian native animal, the Tasmanian devil. So um, it would be only fair uh, that uh, I don't know why. Um, it's only fair that Tasmania is able to use their. I mean, they're nothing alike. Um, 
I mean, where did they think the title, where did they think the name Tasmanian Devil came from? But anyway, as I said, it's everything's okay now because A, the trademark, I mean, are you going to get the too confused? I don't know. It's not for me to say. But uh, it looks like everything's been signed off on everybody now. But anyway, that's some interesting, interesting stuff for you. Anyway, I'm going to head off now. I think if Warner Brothers had any, they would fund they would start a conservation fund for the Tassie Devil. Well, they should, really. They should because um, it is extinct. There's only 15,000 left in the wild. And I know, for example, zoos, Victoria, I know all the Australian zoos, for example, have got Tasmanian devils and have got breeding programs. But we're, you know, it, so it's going to be a case of we've only got them in captivity. A bit like koalas as well. Koalas are on the way out, unfortunately, too. But um, a lot of that has to do with all the fires that we've had and their homes being destroyed. But koalas are going to be only a thing that you can see in captivity. And let me don't mistake koalas; they are their claws are deadly. Kangaroos. All of our animals look nice and cute and cuddly, but you wouldn't want to mess with them. So that's right, and they've made money off off the animal, yeah. But I, I, I mean, it's very interesting though how they have they seem to forget, or they didn't know that it was a real animal. I mean, was it convenient that they forgot? Or, or you know, was was it convenience? Or are they just, or don't they know their product very well? Yeah, I think so. 25%, oh, there's a lot that are on the endangered list now, yeah. Um, I, I, I know that in the last lot of bushfires where they lost, where we've lost a lot of the bushland, they they were setting up a koala. I mean, Krangu Island was decimated by bushfires, and that had a big population of uh, native native animals on there. And I think their koalas, they're they're just, you know, they had a koala sanctuary set up or a hospital set up to try and save them. So, uh, so these are some of the um, native animals that are on the endangered list at the moment. There's quite a few there. The pygmy possum, the numbat, the kangaroo island dunnet, pink cockatoo, the greater glider, the whale, the cassowary, um, long-footed potteroo. <laughs> that's right. That's my argument, autistic shill. I don't believe, I don't believe that they, there's no way they couldn't have known. The quolls, uh, the honey eater, the bilby, the sawfish, the wally, the corroboree frog, the golden finch, wallaby, swift parrot, silverhead, I don't know, antichinus, eastern curlew, Tasmanian devil, boar boar frog, Davies tree frog, and the bandicoot are some of the endangered animals. There's some very interesting ones in there, actually. 
The numbat, you can call somebody a numbat. <laughs> Cassowaries are very interesting animals. The bilby, um, there is a thing to, instead of get, having the Easter bunny, uh, they've started the Easter bilby because that's, I mean, cute. Or rabbit bandicoot is sim <laughs> So sometimes people will call it a, a, a rabbit bandicoot because it looks like a bit of a rabbit, cross between a rabbit and a bandicoot. The cassowary, look at that. Oh, stands at 1.8 metres tall. The potteroo, look at that. Wow. And we, we've talked about the Tasmanian devil. You know somebody who hasn't, <laughs> I know, oh, I thought you were saying you know somebody who isn't, who has a number. You know somebody who is a number, yes. That is the way that we use it, the word number, by the way. Koala is endangered now. It's in the third, the 10 endangered Australian animals. It's gone from eight million to thirty-two thousand. Wow! Within past within the past three years. Wow! That's a lot. The wallaby, which is very like a bait, like a mini kangaroo, is is what how I would describe the wallaby. Like like a baby. It's like a little version of the kangaroo. Now, some of these are actually um, have predators in the wild. So uh, this one I've not seen or heard of. Oh, look at that. Isn't it cute? It only was found in 2013. The sawfish. The Corbury frog. And it's poisonous. You don't you don't want to have this frog, by the way, it's poisonous. <laughs> As I said, some of our wildlife, very cute, but they'll kill you. <laughs> the finch. Eastern curlew. Quolls, um, you can go to um, off WA. What's it called? It's found in WA. Oh, um, what's it called? I've, my mind's just gone blank. Um, some people would say it's blank all the time. Oh, where is it? Where do you get them from? Quite quacker. Oh, cannot find it. Cannot think for it. In WA, there's an island. You get on the boat, you get on the ferry. And people probably, Rottnest Island, that's it. Yes, Rottnest Island. Thank you, Plan to Create. It's funny, I've been there a few times. I've been there a few times and I knew it. I could I could see it. Yes, right Nest Island is where you'll find quolls. So then we've got the boar boar frog. Some really interesting names actually of these places. Yeah. But anyway, so these are all the endangered animals um, that we've got in Australia. But yes, I think the general consensus or the Australians are not buying 
what Autistic Shield said. Uh, we're not buying the fact that Warner Brothers did not know that Tasmanian Devil was a real was a real animal because that just does not make any sense whatsoever that they did not know. Now, just briefly back to the Moscow attack that we've just seen. Um, Islamic, yeah, Islamic State fighters, IS have um, have claimed responsibility, and it's now up to it's now up to death tolls risen to sixty two now. <clears throat> but the Guardian, <clears throat> where I've, has not. Oh, it was um so the UN has condemned it. The president hasn't made a statement yet. So anyway. So the UN have has, has condemned the attack. So yeah. So, yes, yeah, so there's lots happening around the place at the moment. Just the world is just a crazy place at the moment. I just don't know. Tell me, has everybody gone stupid after COVID? I just find that people are angrier, uh, people are less tolerant, and people are less patient. Or is it just me? Am I just all of those things? I'm surprised. Well, yeah, well, uh, Barbara was saying that um, it would, um, there was a warning. There. So that's interesting. Note people are crazier. That was the influence of the MAGA crowd, you reckon? Oh, I don't know. I, I mean... See, I couldn't say that in Australia, though. I don't think I could say that that was the case in Australia. So, no, I think there's a great underdetected sense of being, oh, one day it will come out not in a good way. <sighs> I've been scammed, yeah. Look, I think, as I said, I just I'm just finding that everybody is just... I mean, there is a there's been a report out at the moment that violence in schools are up, which I, which absolutely bothers me. Yes, you read that the US embassy warned Putin and he basically didn't believe them. Okay, well that's interesting. Well, he hasn't made a comment yet, so yeah. Um, and retail theft, I mean, and you know, talking about um, stuff, apparently retail theft in uh, my state of Victoria has gone up 39%. Is there any wonder just about everything is tied down now? I've noticed that. Some stuff now you have to go and ask for, a lot more stuff. 
retail theft jumps 39 percent. Retail theft it's remained the greatest rise in, in recent quarters, such as the items there theft that stolen I include liquor, groceries, and clothes. And 40% of retail theft offenders were first-time offenders. Have you seen the abandoned house grab happening? No, I haven't. Oh, let's have a look. So um, I don't know what it's like overseas, but the cost of living, we've got a cost of living crisis and a rental crisis at the moment. And um, it's not good. I've been watching uh, Qantas in court because uh, Qantas uh, had been deemed of um, illegally um, sacking workers to outsource and they're fighting it because essentially they're up for millions and millions of dollars. Each... Um, it would seem that each worker um, could be, if you've been there for three years or more, you, you, you're looking at about 20, 20 grand or something. And so 20 grand for each of the people. And they're in court trying to uh, defend themselves and say, well, no, we shouldn't have to pay. Um, and one of the reasons why they gave, why so not only did they stand the workers down, their government actually said, for you to keep your workers employed, we'll essentially pay, we'll essentially give you the money and you give it to them. So it was called JobKeeper. So all they were on, so all of their staff were on JobKeeper. So the government was essentially paying for their staff and then they all let them go anyway, um, which was deemed to be illegal. And Qantas was saying that the reason why they had to outsource during COVID was because they were losing money because no one was flying. And it's like, well, no one was doing any, no one was going anywhere due to lockdown. No one could go anywhere. <laughs> like the whole world had stopped. And so they're going, well, we had to outsource because, and then even when it was pointed out to them, Um, uh, and uh, they were saying hang on I've just got to reply to this Someone's saying that they're getting my DoorDash emails to their their DoorDash stuff to my email, uh, my DoorDash orders to their email, <clears throat> but it's not even my house. And I haven't even put in a DoorDash order. So anyway. You couldn't go five because, yeah, that's right. Well, I couldn't go either. So, yeah, their reasoning was because they couldn't go anywhere. <clears throat> they had to stand all the workers down and outsource their baggage services, which was a load of wallop because, as I said, the government was essentially paying their staff wages. So they were stood, so the staff was stood down on JobKeeper. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> Of course. Yeah, they've done it, but they've contacted me through my business page. So it's going through my business. It's going through the It's going through my website. So let them. <laughs> and so essentially what came out was the reason why they had to outsource was that they had promised a profit to their shareholders and they weren't going to get a profit. And they actually had to sell some, apparently uh, Qantas had some vacant land 
and they ended up having to sell the land as well to get a profit for their shareholders. But, yeah, I know she'll order cook. Oh, it, it's, it's interesting, but I've got all of their details. But they've just sent me a picture. Well, this is your order. I'm getting your DoorDash emails to my email. Oh, I don't have a DoorDash account with that email. And what she just sent me, she just sent me a picture of my door. It's not my door. So, you know, it's not my house. So I'm not telling her where I live. But anyway, yeah. So, yeah, so it all came down to, but see, my brother who actually was part of that and he, if the court takes the side of the union and Qantas, because Qantas has appealed all the way and so far they've lost. Uh, if they lose this one again, I mean, my brother's going to be due compensation. But he was saying there was talk about outsourcing anyway. Um, and the other interesting thing about the outsourcing was that the union put together a bid to keep their services in-house. So, like, as a – so that it wasn't outsourced and it was admitted that it didn't matter what the union did, it was always going to be outsourced. Entitled Karen's being arrested. Oh. <laughs> Oh, gee whiz. Yeah, some of that stuff's funny. But anyway, on that note, I need to get going. I'm going to do the children's story at church tomorrow because it's Palm Sunday. And I'm doing a Would You Rather Palm Sunday edition. Would you rather wave palm branches in the crowd or put your coats down for the horse, for the donkey to walk over? So it's going to be, the yeah, the Palm Sunday story uh, as a game of Would You Rather. So I'm just designing that at the moment. So, um, yeah. Look, I want to thank you all for watching me. Thank you for your support. I was really surprised because I got – usually there's an amount, there's a minimum amount that you get for AdSense. And um, the last two months I actually hit the minimum amount, which really excited me because it hasn't happened for a while. Usually it's every two or every three months. So I really, really thank you for your support. and. Um, it's great, and uh, I was really pleasantly surprised when the money came in. Um, so uh, KJ would have had a big bumper payday. So I wonder what she's going to buy with all her money. I just get excited when I when I hit the hundred. It's a hundred dollar Australian threshold, is what. So yes, I got a hundred dollars. So yes, so thank you for all of that. That's going aside, so I can update my. Hopefully, I can update my computer, so I can. It's not so slow, and I can get a taller. I need to raise my chair up, so I don't look like I'm. I'm smaller than what I am because um, I've got the camera looking down at me now. Whoops, there we go. Let's see if we go. Oh, that's better. I'm more in the frame now. <laughs> she'll buy him well yeah I'm more in the frame now I'm still getting used to having such a big screen to to have all my stuff on anyway as I said thank you for watching uh I wish Princess Kate all the best and I've just seen on um X and Twitter there's still conspiracy people still aren't very happy with their news I don't know what they want her to do <sighs> People just, some people just aren't happy in life and just want to complain. But anyway, so thank you for watching and I will catch you again. Maybe I'll be on tomorrow. You never know. But I'm going to go and uh, watch some of the Grand Prix now. And, um, yeah, have a good one. Stay safe and until next time.